Hi everyone, my name's Angela. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Um, I figure most of you are coming here from TikTok, so hello again. Sorry we're not in the garage, new location. I've been having so much fun on TikTok, just being able to create a safe space for people to come to have someone to relate to, to be able to talk about their mental health, their BPD, everything they feel uncomfortable talking about in real life, they can come to my TikTok to talk about or vent about or find someone to relate to and that's been so much fun and it's been bringing me so much joy that I figured why not take it to YouTube too and we can make longer videos and talk about more subjects and just create a really safe space where we can all come to feel comfortable talking about our mental health, talking about our daily struggles and what's been getting us down. I hope you guys will stick around, I hope you guys will enjoy my content and thank you so much for watching. Today what I really want to get into is what actually is BPD? I've made so many TikToks about it, I've written blog posts about it that hopefully you guys have read. I, I post stuff all the time about BPD. So today we're going to talk about what actually is BPD. And I'm also going to talk a little bit about what my experience has been like. The first thing I did was I just went on Google and I found a textbook definition of what what is BPD and if you don't know BPD stands for borderline personality disorder borderline personality disorder what is borderline personality disorder that's hard to say a bunch of times okay so this is the definition I found just by googling just by googling this borderline personality disorder is an illness marked by an ongoing pattern of varying mood self-image and behavior these symptoms often result in impulsive actions and problems in relationships. People with borderline personality disorder may experience intense episodes of anger, depression, and anxiety that can last from a few hours to a few days. So let's kind of dive into that. Borderline personality disorder definitely affects your moods. It says in the definition varying moods, which is extremely true if you live with BPD you know that varying moods is a huge part of it and in that definition it said that all this stuff changes maybe within a few hours to a few days but if you have BPD you know probably that it can change even quicker than that it doesn't have to be hours it doesn't have to be days it can be within one hour it can be within 10 minutes it can be within five minutes the thing about BPD is that the moods and the thoughts and the feelings, everything about it is so extreme. That it can happen in such a short amount of time or a longer amount of time, you know, it, it definitely varies a lot. Um, another thing they were talking about in the definition is relationships and that is a big one too. BPD makes it really hard to have stable relationships, whether that's with family, whether that's with friends, whether that's a romantic relationship. It just generally makes it really hard to have stable, ongoing, long-lasting relationships. That can be from a lot of things. People with BPD tend to need a lot, a lot of reassurance. And I know that probably sounds like, well, most people need a lot of reassurance or anxiety can cause a lot of need for reassurance. But in BPD, we have such a fear of abandonment. And I'm going to make a completely separate video about all the symptoms and what they look like and everything. But for now, we're just going to throw some in there. So in BPD, you have a huge fear of abandonment, whether that's just perceived abandonment whether it's real abandonment, it hurts. Like being abandoned hurts, thinking you're being abandoned hurts, imagining that you're being abandoned, it all hurts. So coming from being so scared of being abandoned, we need a lot, a lot of reassurance. Almost like definitely multiple times a day, it can probably seem super, super annoying to the other person in the relationship. In the end, 
it's a lot of reassurance. We just need a lot of reassurance to know that you're not going to abandon us because even the smallest thing in the change of how you're acting or maybe even a text you send that might seem a little off to us can make us think automatically, oh my god, this person is going to leave me and never come back, <laughs> which is pretty unrealistic if you look at it. But that comes from the black and white thinking, which again will be in the symptoms video. But yeah, so relationships are very, very hard to maintain with BPD, but it is possible. I don't want you guys to take this video in a negative way at all because all I'm trying to do is explain what BPD is to you. This is just what BPD is. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm not saying it's horrible to live with or anything. I'm not saying anything like that. I'm just telling you what it's like. Another thing they mention in the definition is about self-image. When you have BPD, it's really, really hard to know kind of who you are, who you want to be, how you want other people to see you, perceive you. You basically don't know who you are. Your self-image is constantly sliding on a spectrum. Your personality is constantly adapting to the people around you, constantly changing and forming to kind of please the people around you, I would say. Um, and this can be anything. This can be changing your hair color. <laughs> this can be getting piercings. This can be getting tattoos, changing your style, changing the music you listen to, even changing your beliefs, changing your religions, changing, you know, everything about yourself. This comes from not knowing who you are deep inside. You just really, really struggle with self-image. You really, really struggle seeing yourself for who you are and thinking that other people can see you for who you are because you honestly don't really know who you are. People who have BPD tend to pick up personality traits from other people. We tend to pick up beliefs from other people. We tend to kind of cherry pick things, I guess, from different people. We meet in our lives, different people we have around us every day, even people we watch online, celebrities we follow on social media. It's almost like a puzzle. It's almost like we're kind of picking up different puzzle pieces from different people thinking that once we've found enough puzzle pieces, then that'll be one complete picture. That'll be who we are. Which, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily say that's a bad thing. I mean, not knowing who you are definitely can be a little negative. It makes it tough, really, really tough to live everyday life and to go through everyday life constantly wondering what do people think of me I don't even know what I think of myself and the last thing they touch on in the definition is behavior so behavior in BPD can be extremely intense just like everything else that comes with BPD I mean BPD is just a very intense extreme mental illness it's just something that really takes over a lot of your life and that you have to learn to cope around so the behavior thing is almost just like the personality thing, how we kind of adapt and change, can, like um, depending on the kind of people we're around, who we're around, you know, depending on that kind of stuff. Behavior is kind of the same way. Our behavior could completely change from one moment to the other, and it can also be completely untriggered or triggered. I mean, the best way I can explain it, I'll use the emotion anger, but this can happen with literally any emotion, but I'm going to use anger just as my example. So how I like to explain what anger is like in BPD, it's like a light switch flipping on and off for me. If something triggers me to be angry, it's almost like I don't even have time to react before the light switch flips on and I'm explosively angry. It's explosive, it's not pretty, it's not... It's not a sight you want to see. That can happen with any emotion, especially in someone who has BPD. If something triggers an emotion to come out of you and you're someone who has BPD, it might be a lot more extreme than someone who doesn't have BPD. If something triggers you to become sad and depressed, it might last for days. It might last for weeks, you know, because it's just such an intense feeling that becomes so hard to control once it's fully on the surface. I hope that made sense. So that's basically what I'm going to touch on for the kind of definition of BPD, kind of just actually what it is. And I hope that kind of brought light to some of you. 
if maybe you are curious about what BPD is or you think you may have some of the symptoms and you've just been trying to learn about it. I hope that helped you and I hope that was a good enough explanation. I feel like I just talked for so long and I didn't even say anything. Now I'm going to br very briefly, because I'll probably make a whole separate video about this, but I'm going to very, very briefly touch on what my experience in life has been like living with BPD. One of the big misconceptions about BPD is that it comes from, specifically, I'm going to say specifically, is that it comes specifically from childhood trauma. Now this isn't necessarily true, and this almost makes me feel like an imposter a lot of the time because I actually don't have any very significant childhood trauma. I never did. I had actually a pretty normal childhood. Um, I am professionally diagnosed with BPD, so, but that is a big misconception of BPD is that it stems specifically from childhood trauma because it doesn't have to. I mean, it totally can, totally can stem from childhood trauma, but it doesn't have to. You don't, you haven't had to have gone through some crazy specific trauma in order to be diagnosed with BPD. It can be genetic, genetic factors mixed with childhood experiences. And also, if you have, if you're growing up in a household where one or two of your parents have are diagnosed with something like bipolar, um, you're a lot more susceptible to develop BPD. So now let's get into my experience with it. Um, so I actually, I'm 20, and I actually didn't learn that I had BPD until I was 18. But my whole life, I knew there was something a little, I don't want to say off about me. There's, it's not off about me. I just knew I was a little different in the way I acted compared to the way my siblings acted, my friends acted. I just always knew it was something a little different. And I was always being told that I was sensitive or that I needed to calm down or I was panicking. I needed to get over it, you know? I was always being told things like that, that maybe necessarily my siblings weren't being told. And I, no and I would notice stuff like that. So I was always treated a little bit differently. Not completely, but just a little bit differently because I was overreactive and emotional and hard to deal with hard to deal with I guess they would say <laughs> but anyway so I was dealing with BPD probably as early as they don't like to treat they don't like to diagnose people with BPD until you turn 18 because they they it could just be teenage hormones and stuff but I would say I have been dealing with BPD symptoms since I was as young as 11, I think. Um, I mean, I can remember. I can remember times when I was that young where I would just be so depressed I couldn't get out of my bed. And I would be stuck in my room and it would be like life was over. It would be like life was ending and there was nothing I could do about it. And I remember these things when I was young. And I actually, the first time I got admitted to the hospital, I was 13. And I've been to the hospital three times. So my BPD has sent me to the hospital three times. Um, basically, life when you have BPD the, is just intense. It's just the only way I can explain it is it's very intense. It's like you're riding a roller coaster 24 seven that you don't have control of. And you have to kind of, as you get older, learn how to control it. And I think you could imagine how hard it would be to learn how to control a roller coaster. Your mood is constantly changing. Your personality is constantly changing. You're constantly adapting to different ways you feel and different beliefs you have. I wouldn't change the fact that I had BPD for the world, you know, because some of my cre most creative efforts have come from my darkest times from BPD. I've been able to connect with and help so many people who also struggle with BPD. And it's just amazing to me knowing that there's other people out there that want to listen to what I have to say about it and they want to hear my story. Um, I seriously cannot thank you guys enough for watching my TikToks 
and commenting on them. Every time I get a comment, my heart just gets so full that there's people out there that can relate to what I'm saying. If you have BPD, you know how alone the journey can feel when you feel like no one can relate to you and you feel like you're just going through this completely alone. But I want you guys to know you are so not alone. And I, for as long as I live, will always be here for you. I will always be a place you can come to feel safe and to feel connected and to have someone to relate to. I really, really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you like it and subscribe down below. Leave a comment if you want. Let me know what your experience with BPD has been like. And I love you guys. I'm so, so happy. It makes my whole life that I can be there for you and I can be someone you can relate to.